one of those fans went on YouTube last night. He did this like monologue. So. Here we go, guys. Tuesday. Two down, three to go. All right, guys. I think this is my favorite position. I grew up. Loving wide receivers, cornerbacks, you know, running backs, quarterbacks, because they look good. They get the ball. Quarterbacks drop back in the pocket. Joe Montana, Jerry, I mean, Joe Montana to Jerry Rice, Troy Eggman to Michael Irvin or Alvin Arbor. Joe Montana to Jerry Rice or John Taylor. Dan Marino to Irvin Fryer. And so on and so on. I grew up watching the running backs. Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, Bo Jackson. And the list goes on. Walter Payton. You know, guys like that. Cornerbacks. I grew up watching prime time. I wanted to be just like Deion Sanders. I even wore my uniform like it. I even had the padded socks and the cleats and the gloves. Let leave them unstrapped and a bandana under the helmet and the wrist and the headband around the neck. I had it all. I used to lay my uniform out just like Deion did before every game because it looked good. When they score a touchdown, running back score touchdowns, it looks good. Wide receiver catch the ball for a touchdown, it looks good. Cornerback, get a pick, get a pick six, it looks good. But we're not talking about what looks good right now. We're talking about what matters and what counts. The offensive line. Best position on the field. Best position? I tell you, what, what, what you talking about, man? What, uh, offensive line, best position. Best position on the field. The most important position on the field. No stats. No commercials. No shoe contract. The only stat they got is how many games do they play in the season? How many pancakes do they have? Meaning they just clear somebody out like Larry Allen used to do. Offensive lineman, no prima donna. All in the trenches. How you can lay somebody out. How you can get the get somebody the hell away so you can make way and make a hole for your running back. Get the hell out of my way. Zeke is behind me. That's all it is. Just blocking in the trenches. Travis Frederick. It's clear to participate in training camp. Now, I repeat, Travis Frederick is clear to participate in training camp. Now, we haven't seen Travis Frederick since 2017, since he was diagnosed with GPS.
The last time they interviewed Travis Fredericks was earlier this, I think, season, which is off-season to y'all. Stated that he was ready to play. He felt good. He felt great. He's recovering well. And he was able to go through OTAs and mini camp and all that. And practices. No pads. Just, just practice. Which was pretty good. So now with Travis Frederick back in the mix. Now it's time to really let the pads do the talking. Because the offensive line is not a prima donna position. They don't get the recognition that the, the, the wide receivers and the cornerbacks and the, and the you know the DBs and the and the running backs get. Quarterbacks, the sissies. They do all the dirty work. And they get no recognition. The most important positions on the field. Offensive line controls the offense and the defense. And I sound like a broken record. I'm going to say this one more time. Probably going to say it again, but I'm going to say this one more time. Offensive line controls the offense and the defense. It milks the clock. It creates power football, power running. You're able to dominate time of possession. Keep your defense off the field. Keep them fresh. So when they do get in, they can make all the proper decisions that they need to make for a three and out so the offense can get back on the field and do the same thing. That's why the offensive line controls both sides of the ball. Milk that clock, nickel and dime up the field. Run, 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 so they, they can't take it no more. I don't give a damn if they know what you're gonna do. They can't stop it. So welcome back, Travis Frederick, since we need you. No offense to Joe Looney, because he did a great job last year, but he wasn't Travis Frederick. So with that being said, y'all think about that. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. How do you feel? What's your opinion about Travis Frederick coming back? Because whether we like it or not, he's coming back. Ain't nothing we can do about it. Just like it wasn't nothing we can do about Alan Hearns getting cut today. Because we just fans. Nothing more, nothing less. So if you're mad, oh well. If you're happy, oh well. But make sure you stay cowboyed up and prayed up because you never know what the day is going to bring you. How the your boy? I'm out. And the only thing else I got to say is, how about them cowboys? Yeah!